Hello, I'm Dr. Vanita Rattan. I'm a doctor, but also a cosmetic formulator specifically for skin of color. So today's video is about how to repair a damaged skin barrier. What are the symptoms? How does it occur? And some of the reasons are actually gonna shock you. What you can do to prevent it from happening next time and then the routine that you need to follow in order to repair your skin barrier. So if you've been using lots of actives, your skin is feeling dry, sensitive, dull, wrinkled, aged, then this is a video for you. As you already know, I'm in the comment section for one hour at the launch of every single YouTube video. So when you subscribe, hit that notification bell so you know that I'm here to answer your questions. You can also ask me your skincare questions on Instagram. I've got two accounts, Dr. Me Ratan and Skincare by Dr. V, also on TikTok. And also you can join our private Facebook group called Dr. V Sock Family, where you can come and ask your questions. Um, I believe our group's now at about 13,000. And so you're going to have people in your country who are going through similar skincare conditions that you are and have access to similar products that you do. So it's just a very safe space. If you are a skincare enthusiast, please do get your hands on a copy of Skin Revolution. It's a book that I've written, published by HarperCollins, available on Amazon. And it really does go through all of your skincare conditions in quite a lot of detail. As you know, none of my videos have ever been sponsored. They will never be sponsored. That's very important so that you know you're getting evidence-based information. But also for skin of color, we require slightly different actives. The reason is that our melanocytes are large and they're easy to trigger. So I always say one scratch, one bite or one burn and we hyperpigment. This does not happen to Caucasian skin. This means that we cannot afford to irritate our skin, but also the actives that we need to use need to be slightly different and at slightly different percentages. So first of all, what is the skin barrier? The skin barrier is a watertight seal that will keep your skin looking healthy, plump, and will feel soft and supple. If you damage your skin barrier for whatever reason, you tend to have then less fats in the skin, you tend to have increased transepidermal water loss, so more water evaporation from the skin. This then makes the skin feel dry and sensitive. Wrinkles then to appear worse because you have less water in the skin. You're also not really able to treat your hyperpigmentation because any actives that you put on the skin are going to irritate the skin, burn the skin and make the skin more sensitive. Even your anti-aging ingredients can't really be applied to damaged skin barriers such as your retinol is only going to worsen the situation. So if you damage your skin barrier, it sends you 10 steps back on all the other ingredients that you want to use on the skin and your other skincare concerns. In addition, if you damage the skin barrier, which is meant to protect you from pollution and bacteria, then you're allowing these into the skin. These particles will further damage the skin, further dry out the skin, worsen your damaged skin barrier, and actually tends to can lead to premature aging as well. Lots of things, side effects almost, if you like, that will happen after you damage your skin barrier. So how do you strengthen your skin barrier? First of all, you want to, obviously prevention is always better than cure. So. The best practice to prevent it in the first place would be first of all starting off with a mild cleanser. I know a lot of us think, you know, more squeak, squeak clean the better. The more microbeads that we use, the better. The more we scrub the skin, the better. But actually what you're doing is you're stripping the skin of its natural fats. You're allowing the skin to become sensitive and you're getting rid of the protection, the natural protection of your skin. Even when it comes to exfoliation, this is the reason why I prefer chemical exfoliation and gentle chemical exfoliation with mandalic and lactic acids versus a physical scrub because a physical scrub you don't know where the dead skin stops and where the living skin cells start and so you're not getting even exfoliation of just dead skin cells which is what you get with a gentle chemical exfoliator which is why for skin of color I will always always say opt for a chemical exfoliator because you don't want micro tears and you don't want any hyperpigmentation on the skin. I'd also say go slow with the more irritating ingredients such as retinol. This is the reason why we say even with the daily range, if you're gonna use your alpha hydroxy acid exfoliator, so mandelic acid plus lactic acid with 7% glycerin, Use that two nights a week and the, the other nights of the week is when you use your antioxidant power serum with your retinol, retinaldehyde, vitamin C, coenzyme Q10. You wouldn't use them on the same day. The other ingredient that can be quite irritating but is also very effective is benzoyl peroxide. Benzoyl peroxide I'd only apply to the spot itself, not the entire face. So spot treatments are much, much more effective. There's no irritation or damage to the rest of the skin. 
best practice is always, always going to have your sunscreen SPF 50 with four pluses. I always opt for mineral sunscreen because it's uh, got zinc oxide in it, which is anti-inflammatory. You also want to make sure it's got no fragrance, no essential oils, and no denatured alcohol. So with this particular sunscreen in Zincables, the one I made for you, it was very hard, actually. There was no sunscreens on the market that gave you SPF 50, zinc oxide uh, but with no white cast and to this day i still haven't actually found one this is the only one on the market so you can see right now there's no white cast now the vast majority of skincare contains fragrance especially luxury products if you look at you know whether it's la mer la prairie was it la prairie or prairie <laughs> you know the really expensive one they all have fragrance in them all the spa treatments that you see they all contain fragrance Fragrance used to contact dermatitis in three to four percent of the population. Now imagine when you get a rash on the skin, it damages the skin barrier. Same with denatured alcohol. Denatured alcohol is volatile, it's short chain volatile, and as it evaporates, it takes water away with it. Again, damaging the skin barrier if you use it over a long period of time. And then the other one is essential oils. So I this is why I was you know, when I hear, oh, use natural, it's got this essential oil, I think, no, you're just ruining your skin. Because essential oils is a skin sensitizer. Why would you put that on your skin? It makes no sense. So there are some benefits with some of the essential oils, but guess what? You get those same benefits from, say, niacinamide or vitamin A, but without the chance of sensitizing the skin. So for me, it's always protection before you try any other actives on the skin. Moving on to what can damage the skin barrier. Yes, we've talked about using too many actives at the same time, but there are other things in your environment that you may not be paying attention to. So starting off with pollution or allergens. So if you live in a city, or especially a city which has high pollution rates or you're outside a lot with pollution, then these are all irritants to the skin. They will penetrate the skin, they tend to generate free radicals in the skin, and they also lead to premature aging. So fighting pollution is one of the most important things. I believe 80% of us live in cities. 80% of the world's population live in towns and cities. And so this is something that we really want to be top of mind. So number one, we want to be using antioxidants. So mopping up those free radicals. But second is we have to be cleaning our skin properly, which is why we tend to recommend double cleansing at night with micellar gel wash followed by an oil melting cleanse or oil melting cleanser first and then your micellar gel wash after. The next one is sunburn. So when you lay in the sun for too long, then afterwards you're gonna find that your skin is feeling very sensitive. So sunburn also damages the skin barrier. The next one is aging. So aging with time, you're gonna find, especially when it comes up to menopause, pre-menopause, post-menopause, your estrogen has reduced. That's a humectant in the skin that holds water in the skin. And so now your skin is allowing more irritants into the skin, is feeling more sensitive. So this is something to just be aware of, which is why I tend to recommend you use a barrier oil after your moisturizer at nighttime, something like squalene, marula oil, and fragrance-free oil. So um, the next one is stress. So when you find it comes to exam time, your skin tends to break out, but the skin tends to, tends to become more sensitive too. And this is the reason why. Stress makes every single skin condition worse. So whatever you're suffering with, it just exponentially gets worse during exam time, including myself. I know that if I'm gonna sit in an exam, my hair's gonna fall out, I'm gonna start breaking out, any hyperpigmentation on the skin is gonna jump to the surface, uh, any fine lines that I have get worse. Uh, just everything gets worse with stress. <laughs> right down below if you also have, you know, this constellation of symptoms too. And then the last one is soaps. So soaps can be alkaline. And if you think, oh, let me really scrub with a soap, it can actually change the pH of the skin, which can also damage your skin barrier. This is why I'm not a big fan of block soaps. I tend to prefer skin identical pH cleansers. The good news about damaged skin barriers is that your skin is a living organ. If you put your skin into the correct conditions, it will repair itself. And it depends also on your age, how long it'll take to repair. So it can be as short as four weeks or as long as six months. But if you're doing everything correctly, there's no reason why your skin barrier shouldn't repair itself. So how do we create those conditions where your skin can then repair itself? So starting off with the key actives you want to look for. Look for urea, you want anti-inflammatories, you want 
want ceramides, you want fats, humectants, niacinamide, and peptides. These are all wonderful ingredients to create a healing environment for the skin. Also, of course, fragrance free, no denatured alcohol, and no essential oils, but you already know that by now. Moving on to the step one, always opt for a gentle micellar gel wash initially. I really like the simple micellar gel wash, or you can use our micellar gel wash, which contains Centella asiatica, allantoin, panthenol, those are anti-inflammatories, plus niacinamide and glycerin. So it's very hydrating for the skin. I do also recommend adding in a hydrating toner. I like the one from CeraVe, or you can use our hydrating toner when you get the daily range. So in here, again, we've put in Centella asiatica, allantoin, panthenol, niacinamide, and glycerin. Moving on to your fatty moisturizer. Now that really is essential that you're not using a lightweight gel or a runny lotion. You want a nice fatty moisturizer. When you put it on your finger, you turn your finger upside down and it shouldn't fall. That's the test. I'll give you an example. So this is our CeraPet moisturizer. Pop it on the finger, fingers upside down. It should not fall off the hand. It's just a little litmus test to see percentage of fats in the actual moisturizer itself. So some of the ones that I love, number one is uh, Cetra Ben. So that's a simple moisturizer. It doesn't really contain anything else in it, but it's got a high fat content. The second one I like is La Roche-Posay Lipocar, which has got niacinamide in it. I really do not like the La Roche-Posay range. The vast majority of it is, I've done lots of videos on it. I'm just not a fan. I don't like how they market. I don't like the claims that they're making. I don't like the price point. I don't like the irritating ingredients in a lot of their products, but this particular product is very good. So I would recommend it. The next one is Eucerin. Um, again, that's just a simple fatty moisturizer with emollients in it. It doesn't really contain any other actual with our CeraPet, for example, we did put in ceramides, peptides, put in niacinamide, anti-inflammatories, fats and glycerin. So it just depends on what you're looking for, the price point that you're looking for and what's easy for you to get your hands on. As you know, I'm in the comments section. I cannot wait to hear from you. Please do write down any other videos for me to make for you. Thank you so much for listening and I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye.